Hello and welcome to day three of our journey through Acts 27. Uh, this is our 34th week um, on our journey. And so Paul basically is on a boat and um, he told them, I said, he said, you know, don't leave this Fair Haven's harbor. But they didn't listen to him. And as soon as they got out into the sea, uh, a northeaster uh, came and blew them out. And they had bad weather for several days, no, no moon, no stars. Um, they, they wrapped up the boat. They pulled the, um, the lifeboat on board. They threw stuff overboard. Um, and they're, they're kind of scared. They think they're not going to, the, the way the, the verse 21 ended, or verse 20 ended yesterday with them saying, you know, okay, there's no hope. We're all going to die here. Uh, but today, some good news. Verse 21. Now, and much a hunger being, genitive absolute, it's a participle in the genitive, and a noun in the genitive, asatia means without wheat, literally, but of course, that's not what it meant. It meant being hungry. Nobody, nobody thought about the etymology of a word, I, I, I suspect, when they used it. But it basically is saying much hunger being, genitive absolute. Uh, this is a feminine word, uh, as you can see uh, from feminine endings here. And then active uh, females carry uzis. Uh, fe feminine participles have usa, or some form thereof. Uh, so there you have it. So um, being, uh, hunger, much hunger being. Then, uh, having stood, Paul in the midst of them said. Okay, so theta epsilon tells me, aorist passive. So this is an aorist passive participle. Sta, I can stand on that. Uh, histemi. Uh, so it's an aorist passive participle of histemi, nominative masculine singular, because Paul here is a norm nominative masculine singular. So then Paul, having stood in the midst of them, said, it's aping an aorist, third person singular, aorist active indicative. He said, quote, quote, because we have a capital letter, it was necessary on the one hand, O oh men, uh, this is the imperfect of day, uh, often takes an infinitive, and I think we have one here, uh, to be let up. Um, anago, uh, six out of the seven infinitive forms end in I. Sth tells me it's middle or passive. I think to be led up, so we'll go with um, passive. So it's a present passive infinitive. So it was necessary, O men, to be led up. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it was necessary, O men, not, not to be led up from Crete. Um, uh, having been persuaded by me, I think what he's saying here is, basically, this wouldn't have happened if you'd have listened to me. I mean, that's clear of what he's saying. Um, this was not going to happen, uh, having been persuaded by me. So Sigma Alpha tells me, aorist, my aunt is a active participle, so it's an aorist active participle, um, accusative uh, plural here. Uh, for us, I think us is the implied word. It was necessary for us, having been persuaded by me, not to be led up from Crete and to gain uh, this damage and loss. Um, not the way we'd put it in English. Basically, what he's saying is this wouldn't have happened if you had listened to me. Uh, uh, it was necessary uh, if, so this is a conditional, I think this is a conditional participle. If, if you had been persuaded by me, it would have not been necessary to be led up from Crete and to gain this, this uh, damage and this loss. And so uh, basically I told you so is what he's saying here. And now uh, with regard to, and, and with regard to the things now, I am urging you to take heart, to be strong, to use thumos, to be, have a good, have a good chest. Having a good, have a good spirit. This is a present active infinitive uh, for you to have a good spirit. I am, I am encouraging you. Uh, Parainao, I suspect, is a present, normal, good old present. Um, I'm encouraging you to take heart. For loss of life, none, no life, no loss of life will be. No people, no sailors will be, were lost in the filming of this movie. Um, for uh, no loss of soul, of life, uh, will be from you except the boat. Okay, the boat's going to lose its life, um, but you guys aren't. 
um, which is, you know, that's not what he predicted. He predicted there would be some, there might be some loss of, loss of, of soul, of life, uh, but it didn't happen you know, because uh, God had mercy on them. Okay. Uh, so verse 23, four uh, appeared to me on this night. So this is, uh, you see, it stands, it's par iste me. It's the aorist of par iste me, third person singular, aorist active indicative. For appeared to me on this night of God an angel. The angel, you know, why does he do this? The subject is the last word of this verse. <laughs> Basically, the angel, an angel, an angel of God appeared to me is the sense here. It took me a second to figure this out, by the way. An angel of God, that's nominative, so it's a subject. An angel of God appeared to me on this night. God, of whom I am, so I'm God's, of whose I am. I belong to God, to whom, whom also I worship. So God, whose I am, who, whom I belong to, and whom I worship, an angel of that God appeared to me. Um, so you might consider him, you know, Paul implication here. You might consider my God because, you know, I got connections. He, he talks to me. Uh, verse 24, saying, present participle, do not fear, Paul, vocative here. This is a prohibition, by the way, may with the present imperative. Uh, for be, oh my, it's deponent. Oh my, it's deponent. Uh, this is the second person singular uh, imperative. So it is a present um, middle deponent imperative uh, from phobetomai, and with the may, with the present imperative, it's a it's it's one form of prohibition. Stop fearing, Paul. Um, there might be some suggestion. The present tense has a continuous flavor, so the fact that it's may with the present uh, might might have a connotation of stop fearing, Paul. You don't need to fear. There's no need to fear, Paul. Uh, it is necessary uh, to present you to Caesar. So you, you're on a mission, Paul. God's not going to let you die. Uh, it is necessary. Uh, par iste me. This is that iste me. Same, actually, same form here. Uh, or same uh, word, par iste me. This is an infinitive because the I. It's an aorist uh, infinitive. Aorist active infinitive. It is necessary to present you to Caesar. Dative of Caesar. And behold, um, God, this is nominative, has graced you. Um, God has given to you, this is perfect of carizo, uh, perhaps carizo my, it's reduplicated. The breathy consonants reduplicate with their unbreathy, unvoiced uh, equivalent. So the unvoiced, unbreathed equivalent of that is, and so the kappa is the reduplication. Ending has been shoved right on the stem. Ty is not a tie, so it's sty. It's got a sty. Uh, so this is perfect Miller passive. Uh, if it's charizomai, let's go with uh, middle deponent or something like that. God has given to you all the ones sailing with you. So this is my aunt is an active participle. Uh, so present active participle from pleo, accusative masculine plural. The article never lies. All the ones sailing with you. All the ones when the art when it when the participle has the article use who or that. All the ones who who are sailing with you, you could say. Verse 25, therefore, take heart. That's that word we saw back here, euthumain. Here it's euthumeta, an imperative, a present active imperative, second plural. Y'all, take heart, men. For, I don't know if there were any women on the boat or not. Uh, for, I believe in God. I believe God. I believe God that thus it will be according to that which way, according to which way it has been spoken to me. So he believes God, which is, you know, good. That's a good thing to, when God speaks to you, yeah, you should listen. Yeah, yeah. Of course, this was an angel, but it was a good angel, right? He believes what was spoken to him. He believes God. He knows the angels from God. Uh, Pistuo takes the dative for its direct object. That's why God is dative here. Okay. Uh, uh, according to which way it has been spoken to me, this is a relative pronoun, so this is a relative clause. This is from la leo. Um, the ending has been shoved right on the stem because la le, it's a long e, eh, but it's it's the letter is there. So this is a perfect Miller passive. I would have known it just from the ending, but it is a little beside itself here with an epsilon. So it is perfect. It is uh, passive. It so third person singular. It because it's third person singular. 
has, because it's perfect, been, because it's passive, spoken, because it's laleo, to me. Okay, verse 26. And unto a certain island it is necessary for us to fall out. So we're going we're gonna to be on an island pretty soon, people, um, at least eventually. Uh, so the subject of an infinitive, quote-unquote, is in the accusative case. This is an infinitive from ek pipto. Pipto, yeah, okay. So ain is an infinitive ending, and it's aorist. Uh, epison is the irregular second aorist of pipto. So this is an aorist active infinitive uh, from ek pipto. Well, not a lot of verses today, but we're making our way toward Malta and Rome. Um, and so we'll see what happens tomorrow on day four of our journey uh, through Acts 27.